it's kind of crazy to think that it was just a year ago that the Giants were getting completely just bashed across the board. Everyone was talking about this Odell Beckham trade being such a terrible move for the Giants, except for me, of course. You know, I have to brag a little bit. I actually liked it from the Giants' perspective. And uh, I think that definitely now we're seeing that it's clearly, you know, the fruits of the labor have certainly... I don't know what that what is that saying? Fruits of the labor? Something about fruits of labor. Regardless, uh, definitely a very good trade from the Giants, I think. You know, they got Jabril Peppers, who's been great. And they got the draft pick that they used to select Dexter Lawrence, who has also been great. Don't get me wrong, he's far from a perfect player, but, you know, there's a lot of things I do like about him, and so let's just sort of get into the film study, and I'll talk about what I like about him and what I think he still needs to improve on. We'll start things off with this play. It's going to kind of be a double team, but not really. The left guard looks like he's supposed to double team Lawrence, but since Lawrence kind of runs straight into the tackle, what's going to end up happening after this ball is snapped is that he doesn't really block him at all. However, the fullback is going to come in and block him. So it still ends up being a, a double team to some degree. It's not what, you know, maybe was expected at the you know, start of this play. But what's going to end up happening is that for Lawrence, you know, a lot of guys would get taken out of the play like this. But one of the things that makes Lawrence so good is he's just, he's big and he plays bigger. It's very tough to knock him out of the way. And watch how he's going to then just sort of fall back over, and he's going to be able to uh, help get into this play. Admittedly, it was, you know, uh, his edge rusher that really made the most of that play, but he was still able to come over and make a play, and he didn't really get moved despite the fact that it was a double team. So, uh, you know, three guys touched him at a certain point on that play. So, you know, that's just kind of part of what makes him very effective is just his size. He's 6'4 and 340 pounds. So, you know, he's definitely one of those guys that it's not easy to move him around for sure. And, uh, you know, that's something that he can really use to his advantage. And I actually think that he's used it to his advantage more in the passing game than in the run blocking game. I would actually argue that he's a better uh, for uh interior lineman, he's better at rushing the passer than he is at stopping the run, which is interesting, you know? We're seeing more and more of these interior guys that can rush the passer well. I know he only had two and a half sacks, but, you know, sacks for an interior defensive lineman is, uh, it's it's kind of a, almost a worthless stat. I shouldn't say worthless. What I should say is it's almost like comparing a quarterback's rushing touchdown stats like yeah okay maybe if a quarterback rushed for 10 touchdowns then it's worth noting but a quarterback could rush for no touchdowns and still have a great season an interior lineman could only have a couple of sacks and have a great season and he also had 21 hurries which is definitely not bad at all for uh for a defensive lineman uh, who plays in the inside but Anyways, let's just show this play as an example where what's going to happen is that uh, he's going up one-on-one -on -one against a left guard right here, and watch how he's going to use his power. Well, what he's going to do is he's going to just, you know, it's about as simple as it gets. Just get your both hands on the shoulder pads. He's just going to try and push. It's a bull rush, and, you know, quite frankly, if you're 6'4 and 340 pounds, using a bull rush makes a lot of sense, uh, and so that's what he's just going to try and do, and watch how he's just able to overpower his assigned man and push him right back into Cousins, which leads to a sack. I mean, that's just... That's just strength right there, and, you know, he is incredibly strong. So that's how he was able to get a decent amount of, uh, you know, pressures and a decent amount of sacks was from him doing stuff like that, him just using his strength to his advantage. Uh, and so, you know, that's really valuable. The one, I think, downside you could say is that sometimes it's very easy to take him out of a play if you all you're going to do is try to use strength. Like, for example, on this play, when he's going up against Philadelphia, we all know Philadelphia has a good offensive line. And so, you know, sometimes just being able to try to win their one-on-one -on -one matchups is going to be more difficult. And it makes it even more difficult when the guy you're going up against is the guy who is even bigger than Dexter Lawrence, listed at 6'5", 346 pounds, and that's Brandon Brooks, who's also, you know, one of the best players in uh, football at that. You know, he's a guy who, uh, he's a three-time Pro Bowler, really talented player. In fact, I can't believe he's never made, an, you know, an All-Pro, really, because, I mean, he, he he's up there. I mean, he's, I think, probably underrated. But anyways, what's going to happen is that you're going to see what, uh, what's going to happen is that Brooks is going to essentially just try and get his left arm sort of on uh, on Lawrence's you know, side of his body right here. So, you know, right after the ball is snapped, he's able to get this to work. And so for Lawrence, you know, listen, Lawrence is thinking, hey, I'm 340 pounds. I should be able to just run right through him. But again, in the NFL with certain guys like Brandon Brooks, it doesn't work out that way. Brooks is able to just push him off to the side. And, you know, if 
uh, if Lawrence was going up against a smaller guy, he would easily just be able to run through him. But Brooks is so big, and he's another guy who is big and plays bigger. So it's very difficult to get through him. There's also the other obvious factor and part of the reason why he wasn't able to get many sacks was you can just you can very easily double team a good interior defensive lineman because you have your center there and typically you don't want your center to have one-on-one -on -one matchups so he'll be the one double teaming somebody and if he's double teaming somebody well then that means it's either going to be one of two guys and on every play one of those might be Lawrence um, and so that's what they're going to do here watch how they're going to double team him and there's really no chance of him being able to get through because again if, if you're just going to use your power, it's hard to really try to shift it in a way where you can turn a double team into a one-on-one -on -one matchup and then try to win that one-on-one -on -one matchup. Uh, it, again, it it's there's still value in that. You know, This play still ended up in a sack, although the reason why this play ended up in a sack was because Philadelphia, for some reason, had their left guard in zone here and their tackle in charge of covering not the edge rusher, which just was a terrible play. So somehow on a four person rush they still allowed someone to get straight to the passer um so that was just it was just a blunder by Philadelphia on that one they screwed up more than anything but but again there's value in that if you have to double team Lawrence well now you can't double team anybody else so there still is value in that and when the solution is what well, it can just double team you that's still a pretty good solution and that's honestly still worth a uh, 17th overall pick and it should also be mentioned that he can beat the best of guys too it's not like he can't beat uh he, you know, it's, not, it's not like he's one of those guys who beats up on bad players but struggles against good players like on this play he's gonna be going up one-on-one -on -one against Ali Marpet who's certainly no slouch for Tampa Bay uh you know he's a little bit smaller than Brooks he's 6'4 307 pounds but certainly not a small guy by any means and if I remember correctly he was actually uh, Madden's highest rated guard last year I could be wrong but if he wasn't the highest rated he was up there I think he might be like maybe it was the highest graded left guard but again not that that means too much, but I'm just saying he's a very talented player. Uh, and what's going to happen is that right after the ball is snapped, you notice how he's going to sort of try to do this bull rush, and it's not going to work out too well. Again, uh, you know, Marpet's very good. Uh, he's able to sort of, you know, he's using his size to his advantage, him being smaller, by getting smaller, uh, sort of pushing Lawrence up like that. So what is Lawrence going to do? Well, he's going to make a little move like this. He fakes going, going one way, pushes the other way, and is able to generate some pressure. Uh, and that's a really good move, actually. So, you know, I would like to see him do that more often. I feel like he only did that a few amount of times, and it wasn't like late in the year he was doing it. Like, this was week three when he did that. I, I want to see him make more moves, because one thing I haven't talked about a ton in this video, but I should be talking about a lot is how nimble he is I mean I, I swear this guy he moves like he's 240 pounds like his weight the fact that he can move at his weight is outstanding and I, I just think that he already has so much talent and he showed a lot this season and you know if you watch my video on uh on Christian Wilkins I sort of talked about how a lot of interior defensive linemen don't really do too well their rookie year uh, this year, you know, we had a couple that did well, one of them being Lawrence, obviously, and I think part of it is because usually you can do well if you're nimble like that, if you have good footwork, and he has great footwork. Obviously, there's some players, you know, that's not the case, but I'm just saying that, like, I feel like, uh, you know, having this kind of thing can make you have a better rookie season, and I also feel like typically for a defensive tackle, I kind of just say, you know, throw the whole first year out, just try to learn from it. But you don't have to throw his first year out. He put some pretty good stuff on tape. So the fact that he was able to do this as a rookie should give you a ton of confidence. And I could easily see him being a Pro Bowl level player, potentially even an All Pro level player at some point. I mean, this has really turned into a, a great draft pick, I think. He's someone who can play multiple different positions as well. He can play a zero, he can play a one, he can play a three, which is very valuable. And again, he's just someone who he's not someone that you feel comfortable with on the field. I think really, if I was going up against New York, I'm double teaming him on almost every play. Uh, and again, there's value in that. I mean, he's not Aaron Donald. He's not going to be able to fight through these double teams with a ton of consistency. Uh, but, you know, I mean, at least not right now. Maybe he will eventually. Who knows? But at the end of the day, uh, giving everyone else on your line a one-on-one -on -one matchup and also giving yourself a better chance of fooling your opponent uh, when you blitz, again, just a ton of value in that. And, and I have to say, I mean, again... Uh, I felt like people were so unfair to the Giants with the Odell Beckham trade. I said they got fair value back, and potentially I was too low on them because I think that, you know, with the way they drafted Lawrence, uh, I think they probably got better value back. And I think Peppers, 
you can, I mean, I, I would probably say that Odell, when he's at his best, is better than Peppers when he's at his best, but let's let's be real. The past couple of years, Peppers has been at his best a lot more than Odell has been at his best, and two Pro Bowl-level players are better than one, in my opinion, uh, so... You know, I think this trade, and not to mention they got another pick for it. So I think it was a really great trade from the Giants. And, you know, I think we could definitely start to see some uh, people going back in time and pretend, you know, sort of like the Khalil Mack trade, which I also was a fan of for the Raiders. You know, wanted to give myself a couple of pats on the back here. Uh, you know, I think when people see a player, a team trade away a very likable player and a very good player, the natural reaction is, wow, what are they thinking? But sometimes it makes sense to do that especially when you're a bad team trying to rebuild. I really like what the Giants are doing. I'm not sure if they're ready for like playoffs next year, but I think in a couple of years, they could be really good. I think they're probably a year away, but that's just what I think. What do you think about Lawrence? What do you think about the Odell trade? And what do you think about the Giants as a whole? Let me know in the comments below. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.